Good morning, good evening, good afternoon Earthlings. I hope you've got your cup of tea ready. Let's talk tea today. Christopher Boozy is the subject of a Daily Mail article uh, today. Link in the description. Oh boy, the piranhas are out. I don't think he has any idea what's coming his way. Um, it's a long article. It covers quite a lot about, well, a lot of what all of us already know about Boozy. He's not happy about it. I'll read out his latest tweet in a minute. But the one thing in this article, and it's a very long article, and I think you'll enjoy reading it, is one short little sentence, <coughs> which I think he should be very, very worried about. Um, it's, I'll, I'll just read it out to you and see what you think. He lives in a workaday town in New Jersey with his wife and son. That's not the sentence I'm referring to. It's the next very short sentence that says he also has a daughter. Now, I am definitely not one for going after people's kids. Absolutely not. Um, I know how that feels. I've had people do that to me and Graham. Um, but that one short sentence, unfortunately for Christopher Boozy, that is, that's the dagger in the whole article. That was the bit that stood out to me. Now, to explain about Christopher Boozy's daughter, um, and I'm going to put this in, in as delicate a terms as I possibly can. I believe she's about 28 years old. Very attractive young lady. Um, and she has an online career. Let me put it that way. And her career is, I believe, mostly on Twitter and on Facebook. She has a following of a very specialist taste, let me put it that way. And <laughs> Wally did actually send me one of her latest videos last year or the year before. And I said to Wally, please never send me anything like that again. I don't want stuff like that on my phone. Because what this sort of 20, circa 28 year old does is she has an app where she can uh, put it over herself. I mean, Boozy talks a lot about AI and, and photo generated this, that and the other. Well, this woman and tw at 28, 29, she's a woman. This app gives her the appearance of an eight year old. Um, I'm not going to be more explicit than that other than to say it is the oldest profession in the world for a 28 year old to do. However, the added wrinkle of placing an app over oneself to make oneself look like an eight year old is catering for a particular audience, shall we say. Um, I have no idea what Christopher Boozy thinks of his daughter having that as a, as a living. Um, I don't, I mean, I just, I don't look at things like that. I, if, so, the Daily Mail are letting him know that they know he has a daughter. And of course, it is truly and wholly shocking. It is extremely explicit what, from what Wally sent me. Now, Yankee Wally, um, for those of you who don't know, because there are some people who don't know, but a lot of you do, Yankee Wally was one of the original Mexiteer community, and uh, she did do a video covering Christopher Boozy's daughter, which she subsequently took down. Now, the one thing Wally didn't explain in the video, and, and she put up a few images, but they were pixelated and stuff. Um, she didn't explain clearly that this is a woman in her 20s who puts an app filter over herself to depict herself as an eight year old. Uh, that, that was the one thing. And Christopher Boozy just went wild. He went after Wally. He said, right, this is personal. So it's a, it's a sore point for him. It's a sensitive issue for him. I can understand that. I really can. Um, thank God. Thank God. None of our kids are involved in anything of that nature whatsoever. Um. <laughs> uh, so let's have a look at Christopher Boozy's reaction. 
uh, to this article. Uh, he tweeted about an hour ago, I stopped posting receipt threads to focus on spell table, but it appears the Daily Mail and their journalists want me to embarrass them. Fine, stay tuned. Nothing since has been forthcoming. I hate that word receipts. I hate it. Um, it was that Javanka Dadinka, whatever she's called, Megan's friend, who went on uh, something with Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby um, the day after the Oprah interview. Um, what is she called? Jajinka? Jajinka Jajanka. And she said, oh, Megan spoke her truth. She's got the receipts, which we've yet to see. The kind of people who use the word receipts, I think, are the kind of people who have got fuck all. They've got nothing and they've no intention of ever producing anything because I never saw Megan's receipts. <coughs> people who actually have some substance to say, or some evidence, as I like to call it, refer to it as evidence or proof or backing up what they're saying. But the kind of people who use the word receipts and speaking my truth, they are full of hot air, bluster and nothing. Um, so if I was Christopher Boozy, I would be pretty worried, but I don't think he's intelligent enough to have realised that that little sentence in there is deeply threatening and deeply worrying. And yes, I do believe the Daily Mail will go there. I do. I'm certain of it. Whoever has written that, it's someone called Tom Leonard, I think, I think I've got the name right. Forgive me if I haven't. The Daily Mail um, journalist, let me see what, what the name is, because I do like to give credit. It's written by, yes, Tom Leonard. Um, has clearly done a lot of research on Christopher Boozy. And finally, and this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. I mean, if you're going to troll people, you know, oh my God. You know, glass houses, Boozy, glass houses. Oh, Boozy, it, he tweets how marvellous he is, how perfect he is, how he never puts a foot wrong. He never needs to apologise. Where are the, the, those of us like me? I say I get loads of things wrong. Double check everything I say. I could be full of shit. I could have got it wrong. Um, I'm Fiona. I'm not perfect. I'm an idiot. I didn't do well at school. You know, what? he's so arrogant. He's so, oh, I'm perfect. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. Oh, my God. Um, well, I'm guessing it as his daughter, I don't know how old he is, he's got to be in his 40s, I suppose. If his daughter's 28, 29, something like that. In fact, I think she was 28 when Wally did that video, which was a couple of years ago, so she could be 30. Um, I'm guessing that he was very, very young. Um, he, he was a young dad. I have no idea what the backstory was there. But I mean, it, it, why pontificate to the world? And don't just tweet, oh, I'm gonna do receipts bloody produce it if you've got some evidence if you've got something do it say it put your money mouth where put your money where your mouth is boozy uh, so he is going to get this in shit loads and rock loads i'm certain the daily mail are going to make it their business i can see from the most recent articles they are going to make it their business to make him the world's most famous troll that's how it's going to go down. And the guy just doubles down and doubles down. And he's got all these enemies in the past, you know, who are going to come up and they're going to say stuff like, you know, my cryptocurrency, where did that go? What was happening there? How come you've been accused so many times over the years of having bot farms? And, and the irony is that he says he set up Bot Sentinel to combat mis misinformation and disinformation which is very much the point that the Daily Mail article made, that he is one of the, if not the biggest perpetrator out there on the internet, spreading misinformation and disinformation. And his tweets are just utterly vile. In fact, last year or the year before, I did videos about him saying, you know, if you've, you're trying to start a business up and you want clients, you want to come across as professional, you want people to to look at you and think, this person knows what they're doing. And he's there tweeting all childish nonsense and just horrible trollisms at people who in the hell in their right mind, oh, well, maybe Meghan and Harry, because he did star on their not Netflix docuseries, hate to rub it in, of which they had full editorial control. I'd love to see those words, Daily Mail. Really push it home, because yes, there were two production companies, theirs and another one I never heard of before and haven't heard of since, uh, but they had the final say. Don't tell me anybody else had the final say. 
Meghan and Harry are the owners of that production company and they chose to have him on their Netflix thing. And I'll tell you something else about that Netflix thing. They named three YouTubers, one of which was Shallon Lester. I'm not sure about the other two um, as examples. But that those were not the YouTubers that they were going to feature originally. And Boozy said it himself because Shallon Lester was, I don't know if she's still suing him, but she was suing him uh, for some for the stuff that he said on Netflix. Um, he said that he was not talking about those YouTubers. He said he'd never heard of Shallon Lester. And I actually believe him. I think that's one of the, the few truths that have come out of his mouth. He was actually talking about Murky Meg, according to Taz, and yes, Yankee Wally. But for some reason, someone on the cutting floor decided it was not a good idea to put those three forward. So they changed them to three other YouTubers. I, I'm sure of that. It was always going to be about Murky Taz and Wally, and we all know it. And that's who he was talking about while he was being interviewed. And then, of course, when they put Shallon Lester and the other YouTubers in, if you ask me, Shallon Lester should be suing the production companies and not Christopher Boozy. Because he was, I, I believe him on that, he wasn't talking about those particular YouTubers. So isn't that interesting? And believe me, the Daily Mail, there's always with these British newspaper publications, <coughs> there's always a little sting in the tail in there, in the article, and that's a big sting. That's more of a dagger to the throat that they want to talk. They, they know he has a daughter and they are going to talk about it. Believe me. So him tweeting, he's, he's probably thinking in his little pea brain. Well, that's inaccurate and that's inaccurate. I'm going to tweet, tweet, tweet and put all the corrections right in the article of this and that and the other. He's probably not realised. Well, he will when he sees this video. And believe me, yes, he does watch them. He's blocked me on X. I've never... Never had anything, any communication with him. I have to use a third party app to look at his things. Omid Scobie has blocked me on X. So for sure, for sure, they both watch these videos. Um, so Christopher Boozy, you know, I would be careful. In fact, there's the story of the wide mouth frog, which I've told many times, you know, frog go hopping through the jungle, gobbing off with a big wide mouth to a load of people, a load of other animals, until he meets a snake who says he eats wide mouth frogs for a living. And to which the wide mouth frog goes, ooh, doo, doo, doo. that's Christopher Boozy, a guppy with a big wide mouth who's going to shrink those lips very, very soon because the Daily Mail, oh God, they really do know how to draw blood. And also, I quite admire the, the Daily Mail. You might find that surprising because believe me, me and my family have not always got on with them, but I have admired them on occasion in the past. In fact, years ago, before we moved down here, <laughs> I read about a story of a yacht that sailed into Gibraltar called the Gin. Now, you can Google this. I, I, uh, I'm sure I've told this story before. Um, anyway, <clears throat> the Gin. It was three men that were employed, I think, to transport it from somewhere, I don't know, Caribbean maybe, to Gibraltar. They were three retired merchant bankers, so I mean very wealthy uh, gentlemen who, you know, just doing it because gives them something to do in their retirement and they obviously loved sailing. So they sailed into Marina Bay in Gibraltar with the gin and they were greeted immediately by the customs and excise who had a jigsaw and knew exactly where to cut a hole, and lo and behold, they found a quarter of a ton or somewhat of cocaine. Much to the horror of these three gentlemen who'd been employed for boat transportation, who went, oh my God, I didn't know that was there. Bear with me. So they threw the three gentlemen in jail, I believe. Or I can't remember if the men went in, uh, to prison in Gibraltar or if it was somewhere else um, in the Caribbean. I can't remember, but you can look this story up. Um, and I'm sure I'm getting some details wrong because I was just in Brighton reading this story thinking, oh, my God, what a nightmare. You know, you, do, you paid to do a boat transportation job. You turn up and, and I mean, you haven't even had a chance to clear passports uh, yet. And there's the customs and they've got a jigsaw and they know, you know, how did you know to go into that particular specific part of the boat? Anyway, a quarter of a ton of cocaine was put into a police cell in Gibraltar. Now, a quarter of a ton, that's quite a lot, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. Um, well, it's going to be bigger than me, isn't it? Quarter of 
250 kilos. That's a lot. Anyway, they put this in this police cell and they locked it. The British police flew over to Gibraltar about nine months or so later. They got the key, unlocked the cell, and it was empty. All the cocaine had gone. <gasps> Where could it have gone? Anyway, well, you make your own conclusions of that. I'll, say, I'll dig out a link and I'll try and put that in. The gin yacht. Anyway, so these poor three retired merchant bankers are languishing in prison. I think one of them was released, but there were two. I think it was like two years they were kept in prison. And the good old Daily Mail stood by them and kept saying, how can the drugs disappear from a police cell? How did the, the, they know to jigsaw into that particular part of the yacht? And they lent on it and lent on it and lent on it. And I was so proud of them. They cleared these guys' names. They were released. What a nightmare for them and their family. So there are times that the Daily Mail, I am super proud of them. They do the right thing. <laughs> they stick by the story and they are going to... They're going to take Boozy down. Trust me, I've seen this before. I'm no PR expert, but I'm pretty good at sizing up the Daily Mail. And I know when they are. I can hear the music for Jaws. Dun, 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 dun. Now, I know there's still African parks. There's this uh, Diddy Squiddy whatever. Some person's just been raided and apparently there are legal documents with her. I know all that. I know, I know. Um, but that is not my focus for today. In fact, my major focus was always the injustice of hypocrites like Meghan and Harry who have got the cheek, quite frankly, to go up on stage, talk about online kindfulness, mindfulness, compassionateness, and all the rest of that bollocks. And there are trolls like Christopher Boozy, which they chose to star on their Netflix show, and he is one of the biggest trolls out there and he works with accounts like Sarah Data and Pagan Trelawney and now apparently this Baroness Brooke uh, and it's just despicable what is going on out there. There are journalists like Camilla Tomini who have been savaged. In fact, a few years ago I remember watching her Twitter and she, she was just like, oh, she's not a lady who swears, but she was like, oh, just fuck off. Um, and if you're going to call me the C word, at least use the C, don't use a K. If Camilla's watching this, apparently my kids assure me that when people use the K to represent the C word, it, it's adding emphasis, apparently. That's street language, I don't know. Um, there, Angela Levin. Um, there are loads of celebrities, loads of journalists, and of course the royal family, and especially the Prince and Princess of Wales. There are loads, and this never happened before Meghan Markle married into the British royal family. So what the hell is going on? In the meantime, thank you very much, Tom Leonard of the Daily Mail. And I look forward to hearing what all you guys think about it.